sin, okay, when we look at it from the point of view of scripture, is not the same thing all the way across the board. In other words, all things referred to as sin are not breaching Torah necessarily. We're going to see that here in the verses we're going to read. When it's breaching Torah, it's sin against Yahweh. But sin against each other may be breaching Torah because Torah talks about our relationships, but it may not. It may have nothing to do with Torah because it may be something you just agreed upon with each other and are not keeping it. But it may not be a Torah issue. Of course, having a God, because he didn't know that there's the God, a God or whatever God, you know, speak to you as directly as in this dream as Abimelech had, that scared him pretty good. So instead of owning anything, he wanted to blame Abraham because in the integrity of his heart, he thought she was his sister. He didn't think it was a big deal. And that's what his, that was his argument back to the one speaking to him in the dream. Hey, I, I, he told me he was his sister. Okay? And that's where the breach of relationship between Abraham and Abimelech was that Abraham lied to him. Well, not really, because it was basically their like half-brother, half-sister type of thing. But it was still, he didn't represent correctly that this is my wife. He hid something which breached their relationship. He lied to the king. Lied by omission. Because in reality, they shared a certain amount of parentage that made them half-brother, half-sister. So hopefully we're starting to see how that also is now being handled, that this was not about Yahweh at all. You and I have a relationship. You stole my idols, or at least he believed that his idols were stolen, and they were by Rachel. And you fled from my house. That's a breach of relationship. Now, of course, Levon had breached relationship a bunch of times prior to that, lying to Jacob, doing all kinds. I mean, there's nothing but relationship breaching going on back and forth all the way through. By the way, I count a lot of husbands and wives that have had that for 15 and 20 years. <laughs> and they're all fighting and fighting. But you know what? If, but they both have done it over and over again, breaching relationship. And breaching relationship doesn't mean cheating necessarily. It means expectations were breached. I believed you committed to this, this, and this, and you didn't do that. Or you committed not to do this, and you did it, or whatever. And so there was expectations that were not met, that were believed to be agreed upon. They've decided what he did is wrong. I don't like her, and you're with her, and this is wrong. <laughs> Anybody do that with a child who's getting married to someone you don't approve of? Anybody do it to you when you were marrying somebody your parents didn't approve of? Okay? I know lots of people have had this experience. And so they're having a little meltdown with their brother because of his choice of being with this Cushite woman. Well, none of their bleep, bleeping business. <laughs> All right, it's none of their business. But they're having a problem. So they spoke against him. Oh, they're shocking. Someone's having a blue out and speaking against the person. That never happens. I don't know why that's in the book. Because what happens when you're having what I call the blue out? You're having a emotional upheaval over something that you think is wrong. But here's the thing for all of you that want to attack me and other leadership, Yahweh heard it. So that might, I don't know if it makes it there. That should make a difference. Go ahead and speak against leadership. And if that leadership is appointed by Yahweh, he's paying attention. And you speak against that leadership. There was a lady doing that to me one time. This goes back a long time. And she was in the building. She didn't like a decision I made. And she was ranting. And my wife went up to her at one point and said, you may want to consider what you're doing because Yahweh doesn't like when you rant against and rail against his anointed. So she said, if my, if my, look, you don't think he's anointed, that's fine. But if he is, you may want to reconsider this fit you're throwing. Okay? And let's face it. The blue out looks like an adult version of a tantrum. So why, if you know this, if you know this is how I do what I do. By the way, so you all, and that's funny because one of these people that posted the other day was making this comment like, well, there's lots of good teachers out there and they all do this thing since it's no big deal over at MTY with Rabbi. Okay. <laughs> if you think that there's nothing different about what the Father does through me, that's fine. But if you do, then why wouldn't you be afraid to speak? And of course, almost all these people that are speaking against were actually believing that I was different 
until they didn't like something. Then all of a sudden, they changed their thought. Now I'm just an average Joe. And so they weren't afraid. He says, why were you not afraid to speak against my servant? And can we, maybe it's a stretch, but can we extrapolate that out to all those who fall in the category of my servant? Prophets, teachers, all the ones that Paul mentions in the fivefold? All right, so what Torah command did they break there? It was a breach of relationship with Moshe. They disrespected Moshe. In doing so, they also disrespected Yahweh. It's not really a Torah command for that, but it's a sin, it's a breach of relationship. Okay, so he says, he says, oh my master, please do not hold against us the sin in which we have done foolishly in which we have sinned. Because if it was against Yahweh, why is he asking Moshe to forgive him? Because Yahweh said, why did you do this to Moshe? You arrogant brother and sister, you. Okay? So just bear in mind, when you're calling me arrogant, which one of us is being arrogant? Because after all, to call me arrogant, you must have been looking down from someplace above and call, looking down at somebody and judging them arrogant. So which one's being arrogant? Nobody felt bad for her and went out to coddle her and said, oh, this is so sorry that you're out here being put outside the camp for seven days. And Really? Because that's what y'all do all the time. Look at me, I sound Southern all of a sudden. Okay? That's what, that's what you got, use guys do. All right? All right, look. Because you feel bad for them. All right? Why do you feel bad for somebody who's acting the fool? I don't know why you do that. I watch parents entitle and enable their children because they tell me this is why they do it. I feel bad for them. Then you're only making it worse. But I feel bad for them. Why do you feel bad for them? Because they have no ability to lead their lives and do this. And well, you're, what you're doing isn't helping that. To do what needs to get done, you have to have a belief that you can do it. All right? Nobody ever achieved anything by accident. Okay? Nobody, you know, started a successful company by accident. No, I mean, there are people that started a successful company that never expected maybe to be as big as it became, but they still expected it to be a success. Nobody achieved any award of any sort without putting in the effort and believing they could. Okay? You watch people in award ceremonies, they don't get up there going, I have no idea. I never expected to ever win anything. I never thought I could do this. No. They may say, look, I'm humbled because the competition was so impressive, but I worked my you-know-what off to be here. Okay? So I, I didn't do that not expecting that at some point this may be possible to do. No team wins a championship by accident. All you ladies married to men where you're the dominant one, are you liking it? Is it working for you, dominating them? Are you truly happy? Guiding and instructing and telling them how stupid they are? Sure, you have authority and power because they let you, but is, is that really joyful and happy? Go find a wife with a strong husband who provides for them, see how happy they are, okay? But they, but they also have to accept that they don't get to jump over, which can be hard. It's a hard temptation to resist that. Aaron and Miriam are jumping over. They, they were getting in their brother's face and they were tearing him down in public, saying things they shouldn't have said. Yahweh hears it. You need to pay attention to that. Yahweh is paying attention. He hears these things. 